Okay, guys, welcome back. We have another another simul coming in. This time we have a much quicker time control. This is 15 minutes without increment, with me as the host of the simul having five extra minutes because I need to play eight people at once. I'm very likely to get into time troubles in this simul, so I have to play in a pretty consistent time control. Okay, we have the accepted Queen's Gambit here. I think I'll go solid with e3. That's the most kind of um, most kind of easy to play kind of solid move. Let's go knight f3. Now. I'm playing a lot of d4 in this simul just because uh, I want to practice all of my d4 openings a little bit, which I never really mastered too well. Okay, I will castle. c4, the queen's gambit we have in this game. So b5, yeah, this is... Um, This is logical, black wants to put his bishop on b7, I kind of want to put my bishop back on e2 in order to be able to play a quick a4, I think uh, I think uh, that's the way to go. Okay, c5, what's it, yeah, he is pretty high rated, L let's play solid, I'll go knight of free, I will decline all of those Benko gambits for now. Good luck, of course, let's write it down. Okay, time will be very much scarce here. Okay, so we have a kind of a King's Indian in that game. We'll see how it goes. Okay, now in this position I definitely want to go a4 to create some weaknesses on the queen side. Okay. Yeah, now in this game black chose uh, um, a little bit of an inferior opening, I already see the center quite nicely, I can just develop in a very free fashion here. We have a King's Indian kind of position in that game. Knight c6, okay, I think this is an inaccurate move because now I can play the move d5 with a gain of tempo, which would have been less of a big deal if I would play it one move earlier. My plan in this game is to put a knight on c4, which is a very nice square for my knight, and later on, later on maybe try to put some pressure against this pawn on b4, because it cannot really support it. Let's go knight e2. In this game I will probably stick to some Catalan type of setup. Okay, this is a pretty normal time control there. Uh, uh, not time control. I wanted I wanted to say a pretty normal type of position there. Ninety seven. So now I'm going to try and focus on this pawn on b4. Let's play queen to a4, trying to exert some pressure against that pawn already. Ninety seven. Yeah, this is a bit. This is going to be a bit awkward for Black now. Because his, his position is very cramped. C6, I don't think it's uh, the most... Um, this is not the precise way to play the setup because now I can go E4. This move I normally cannot do. Okay, let's go E4 because I can. Alright, C5. This is all pretty much standard and logical. I'm thinking going bishop d2, starting to eyeballing that pawn on b4. Or rook d1 first, maybe, yeah, let's, maybe let's play this one, a little bit more flexible. In this game we're still in the developing part of the game. Bishop f5, looks logical, but I think I'll go queen b3 right now, just to double attack those two pawns. So if black wants to play bishop f5, he should first play the pawn to c6 and then maybe consider this move. Because now he will face, I think, some tactical problems there. Knight e4 is not the most common move. You're moving the same piece twice. Now I need to focus on this knight and how to deal with it. 
So the moves knight c3 makes sense, queen c2 makes sense, knight d2 makes sense, but my time is very scarce, I'll, I'll just go intuitively with knight c3. Queen c7, alright. So bishop d2 is planned. d6, okay, so now I'm thinking whether I should go very aggressive with e5, try to take advantage of my development. Or go normally with some move like bishop d3, also makes some sense. Basically when you have a better development you're supposed to play more aggressively than that. I could also take on e6, maybe go bishop f4, try to put some pressure on the pawn on d6. Everything is possible basically. Because... My position is so good. I guess I'll go e5. I'll try to. This is a very quick time control, so ideally you want to put as much pressure as you can on your opponents in the opening so you can kind of win more games more quickly and get rid of some players, kind of, to, have, to play against less players, improve your chances of surviving. Let's take on e4. Okay, f6 is not a very good move. I will just keep on developing. I will put my knight on e2 in this case, not to block my bishop on g2, since I already played the move pawn to e4. Rook b8. I'm not sure about this move, I think I will just develop my rook into the game. Okay, g6. Now I, I can choose between going e4 and going back into some Marotze bind type position, but I really like the move g3 here, playing for a, a kind of position with the bishop on g2 and some pressure on the long diagonal. Bishop c6 attacking my queen. Obviously I need to move. So... Basically I don't want to block my rook. It's a bit weird to put my queen on a1. Also, maybe I can place my queen on a2, provoke him to go b3 and then go to a1, because the pawn on b3 can be a little bit weak. Let's try to provoke. I go queen a2. Let's castle. The pawn on d4 cannot be captured. Yeah, now in this position I was kind of hoping for a queen a4 check to work out somehow. Let's try it. Yeah, b3, so that's the move I wanted to provoke, because now, now the spawn can be even weaker in the long term. So, probably queen b1, because the queen on a3 is very risky because of that bishop standing there. a1 just looks, looks kind of bad. I guess I don't have too much choice, right? I kind of have to, do, I kind of have to go queen d1, queen b1. Okay, now I can seize the opportunity to take the two bishops advantage, which I will do. b6, I can win a pawn right now. I think I will. So I can take on e6 maybe first. Just to create some weaknesses, let's just, let's try. It, so I took a pawn in this game, so I think, uh, I think I should be doing pretty well there. Okay, d6. Now you see I have some pressure on this pawn on b7, so it's not very easy to develop for black in this position. But I do have this uh, bishop eyeballing my queen. I'm thinking to going queen d2. The idea to set up a, a bishop on on um, on b2. Let's try it out. Yeah, this opponent fell for a very. Um, with a very, uh, with a very tr standard trick, you will see it in a moment. e5, I don't want to close up the game just yet. Let's play h3. I'll exchange queens. And I win a queen. That's nice. My opponent er urging me not to eat his rook because he made his move by mistake. You know what? Okay. Arthur, this is for you, just because I love you. 
I'll do something else. I'll be nice. Let's develop a piece. Okay, in this position I have a very pleasant advantage. His pawn e6 is weak and I have the two bishops advantage. I'm thinking about going g3, putting the bishop on g2, also kind of not allowing this knight to get any activity. Probably I should castle long first. Okay, now my idea was to play b3. Bishop e5, it's pretty logical. He is now pinning my knight against my bishop. So logical now would be bishop f1 to safeguard that bishop. Also logical is to at some point take on c5 and try to put a knight on d4. Yeah, lots of options. Maybe I'll play bishop e1 just to open up that line for the rook. Let's go bishop e1. Long castles was played. I think I'll play g3 now. c6, okay, so now I, I must play a free at some point. Probably I should do it now because I cannot allow him to maintain this huge pawn chain. Now this knight is seeking some activity, so I'll play bishop e2 to restrain it. Rook c8, okay. Can I go and try to pick up this pawn on b3? Or just go d takes c5 and knight d4 like I wanted to do earlier. It's a bit more logical. Knight on d2. It's a bit weird looking. Let's take on c5, see what happens. Knight b6, aiming to take my pawn, so I must play b3. Bishop b2, developing. The queen must escape. Okay, now this is the move I kind of want to do. Wait, do I have tactic? No, my bishop is hanging. That's annoying. But if I play knight d4, then it's also defending the bishop, right? Yeah, this must be the correct move. So my bishop is eyeballing my knight, I must defend the knight. I'm playing very solidly in this simuls, I'm not giving the opponents any potential ch chances, like unnecessary chances. a6 preparing b5, I will play a4 to stop it. Okay, knight b6 is threatening my pawn on c4 but that's a pretty bad square for the knight don't put your knights on b6 like that i'll just play b3 and this knight have no no future okay queen c7 this kind of allows me to play knight d5 with a tempo the question is what do i get by that maybe not too much just lots of exchanges Still I need to put my rook on c1 probably and I must play quickly, I don't really have time for very deep reflections. I probably must take with the king because the queen needs to defend d4 and the bishop needs to protect e4. Is this pawn just hanging? Seems like. d takes c4, okay now white is definitely better, my pawn structure is much more solid than his. I'm not going to win this pawn on c4 probably, but I can try to provoke some weaknesses by playing queen c2 or even b3 immediately maybe. I'm not sure if b5 is a useful move for him or not, that's the problem. But I have no time at all to think, just no time at all. b3, oh, let's go b3 just intuitively. Okay, bishop b7. The obvious move now would be knight d5. Once again, not very clear exactly why it, what am I getting by that. I will probably be the first to seize the c-file. Is this going to grant me the victory? Not clear at all. I don't have anything else good to try, so I'll play it. Okay, 
I'll exchange rooks because I'm a pawn up and I want to simplify. Alright, now... He wants to take on d4, maybe put pressure on this pawn. Maybe it's a good timing to play d5 because he misplayed his pieces a little bit. Let's play d5. f4, pushing his knight away from its active position. He chose to take with the bishop. I'm happy about this because now I have a good game on the c file. I can try to penetrate with my rook. c5, trying to open up the position for the two bishops. I think I can just continue developing. Flex position is very difficult here. He's a pawn down and I'm keeping the pressure with my two bishops. Rook c6 is definitely my move. Preparing the development of my other rook. c1. e5. Interesting. Very good move, probably. If I take his pawn, I'm tripling my pawns. I probably should play a solid move like e3. Probably b3 was was a bad move. I should have played e5 maybe first. I let his position become a little bit too active. But it's very difficult to play accurately in those simuls. So if I take the rook, my knight is going to be pinned. But I... Wait, wait, wait. He has knight e5. Huh. That's annoying. Maybe I would lose material if I play rook takes. Maybe I'm forced to take with the pawn, which is unfortunate. Very little time, I will just take it. Okay, rook c8, rook c1. I'm enjoying my position here. Okay, bishop d7. Now, the, the c file maybe is not too important. I'm going to play a4, trying to push his knight away into a less active position. Let's develop this rook. C3 I don't get at all. I think this pawn is going to get lost eventually. Let's go queen 3 probably, or c2. My king is also not so safe, so I want to spend a move bringing it to a safer position. I guess I'll go three. Okay, a6. I'll go bishop a3, putting pressure against that weak pawn. So he takes rook, takes a6. I can take both ways, but I'm so low on time. Probably both moves are very good. Let's take with the rook, open the c, keep it, keep the c file opened up. Now I need to definitely spend the move on king g1, some profile axis, keeping keeping it safe. Queen a7, let's go rook c3. Wait, it's not a good move. Queen d3 maybe, trying to pick up this pawn. Self-pinning move, but I don't see a way for him to exploit that. Rook c8. So he's playing for some tricks, I guess. Some discovered attacks. Okay, fair enough. Let me just keep on developing. This pawn on a3 slightly more annoying than I would think. d5, you have maybe rook d8. Can hardly move any pieces. Yeah, this is three move. That's that was a surprisingly good move, at least, at least from what I could tell. How do I develop? Maybe I must play a three. Take, bishop takes b three, rook b one. I guess I'll try it. Don't have too many either. Too many other great choices, anyways. Rook c7, trying to pile up against my knight on c4. Eight. Okay. Yeah, he's threatening to take two times and then bishop c5. Yeah, I'm, I'm in a very bad position here. 
How did this get so bad so quickly? You know? Huh. I have almost nothing to do, it's pretty amazing. Rook b1 takes and d4, but it's not really working. It's completely losing. Okay, let's try to complicate. I'll play b4. Probably a bad move, but I have nothing to lose, I feel like. Getting really, really low on time. Bishop f1, maybe. Putting this bishop on a... I save square. He's playing super quickly, this opponent. I have no time at all. Must play quick. We need three, maybe. D5, that's really nothing, but nothing, there is nothing else anyways. I guess I'll just double on the C file here. I can take this pawn in A7 actually. Yeah, let's take it, I mean it's a pawn. I'll play A5. Okay, so now there are going to be some mass exchanges. Which is good for me having a pawn up. Problem I have no no increment at all. There is nothing that will keep me alive when I will have very little time. Probably in this time control you're not supposed to play against 8 people, maybe 6 maximum. Definitely don't pick up too much of strong players. It's a good principle for Simul's guys. Yeah, maybe take on f5, open up the position. Let's play this first. Then maybe take on f5. What is this? Tries to win a pawn before taking. Okay, but now maybe I'm not taking. Maybe I'll play rook c1. Yeah, this position is too complicated for the amount of time that I have. I must, I must somehow keep it simple. I guess I'll just take and play d5, knight d4. Bishop out of the danger zone. Okay, I'll go for the end game, which is completely lost, but there are really no other choices anyways. Yeah, I'm busted in this game. This guy pl pl played very well. I will check later if uh, if there were some funny businesses there. He made this, this very, those very quick decisions, uh, almost didn't think the entire game. And just won what so, seems to be very easily. I will have to, I'll have to bring the tempo of the game up a little bit. Bishop c3, solid. My rook needs to find some activity here. I need I need to go the long way. I'll take a pawn. I think I will I have no choice. There only one game that is finished. I I must I must start Offering some draws in order not to lose in all of those games. Uh, 
Okay, my position is really great here, but I'll offer a draw. Okay, I'll offer, I'll offer multiple draws. Try to exchange some pieces. Hoping that I'm not blundering here. So, okay, one draw taken, that's good. Wait, so how many games left? Only two games left? That's not too bad. Okay, here I have two minutes. That might be enough to win. And here I have also two minutes. I'll, I'll try to win these games at least. Maybe with only two boards playing that might be okay. Still very difficult because I don't have like a a winning attack or anything immediate. It would still take quite a bit of time. Definitely going to try though. So I have a piece up in this game. There's also a good pressure on this pawn on f7. Let's play 3, just safeguarding some stuff. Okay, so I did decided not to give this check on b1, which I'm kind of surprised. I thought this was his whole point, kind of. I can play p4 just to stabilize my pawn on a5. Okay, now I think I will go for some uh, simplification. I will exchange lots of pieces just to uh, make the position slightly easier to play. When you have little time, it might be a good idea to to make your position slightly more um, slightly more kind of. Uh, a position which is easy to display. Bishop a2. I'm putting my rook into a defensive position in order not to not to fall for any kind of uh, funny tactics. So 1 minute and 17 seconds left in this game, the other game is still playing. The problem is that these guys really play very quickly the opening and then they kind of take their time later on. Okay, rook b7 is a blunder, sorry, I will take it. Actually in the final position of this game I think maybe even black is at least not worse with his more compact pawn structure. You see he has this long pawn chain that can start moving forward. This game was surprisingly accurate by the opponent. 97, first move of the engine. I'm very surprised by that. DC4, obviously the first move of the engine. And now this move C3. Yeah, I mean it's not the first move of this engine, but Oh no, yeah, okay, yeah, e yeah, okay, basically, yeah, this guy definitely played with an engine. Too much accuracy. Bishop e7, bishop f6. Oh, first lines moves. Yeah, you got yourself reported, buddy. Mr. whatever. I will report him later. Oh, I lost a lot of time right now. Okay, I'll exchange. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. no, 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 no. He's threatening nasty stuff. I must stop. E4. E4 is very good. No. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay.
think I'm going to win the remaining two games. Queen f6 is a blunder. Thank you. I'm not. I'm not being. Uh, I'm not being too uh, forgiving for blunders right now because I have very little time. Hopefully he resigns. I'll take on d7. Let's make it simple. I don't need all of those pieces. I'll just start pushing my pawns on the entire board until one of them promotes. That would be a very easy strategy. Okay, this guy plays on. I will try to make as many pass pawns as possible. Just uh, I'll exchange some pieces. Always exchange pieces when you have the material advantage. Yeah, I lost one pawn, doesn't really matter. I think I have a very quick checkmate. That's what's important. I don't even taking that bishop, I just want a checkmate. I don't want him to have any checks. No draw now, thank you. Oh, this is not a checkmate. Let's go queen f8. I must I must give a quick checkmate because if I don't give a quick checkmate, I might might not be in time to checkmate to checkmate both of these guys. I'll, I'll, oh, he resigned. That's good. So only one board remaining. That's good. That's good. It should be okay with only one board remaining. This is oh, this is a stalemate. Nice. No stalemates today. Oh no, it's not a stalemate. He has a pawn. No, so there are no stalemates. Sorry. He has a pawn, so he has no stalemates, and I can put two queens and win quickly. That's good. Checkmate. Okay, GG's. Yeah, this was a quick simul. I, I lost one game to an, a player which obviously played an engine, and he will get banned for this. Um. If you wanna, if you if if you play in a simul and you use engines, if that's what you want, if that's what you are trying to do, it's very pathetic. Uh, so, thanks for the opponents for the game. They played well. I should have probably won some more games, but the the time was probably not suitable for this kind of simul. I should have taken slightly more time. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed yourself and learned something. I'll see you guys in the next videos. Don't forget to subscribe and to comment and leave a like for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you.